Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And today, my good friend Teresa V is back with us. And we're going to be talking about living in the now moment, um, along with all sorts of other stuff. Hold on one second. Let me bring it all up here. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it is about, you know, um, what do you mean when we say we're, you know, living in full trust and what does that look like and how do we get there? How do we stay present to the world around us when our sensitivity makes it so uncomfortable sometimes? Moving humanity forward from here, because he, <laughs> here right now has been an, uh, a lot going on, right? And we're going to talk about our guidance and why does it sometimes feel like we can't access our guidance and the role that the angels and our divine team play in our lives and the world right now, right? So, a lot. That's a lot of stuff we're going to talk about today, but we always have so much fun with Teresa. And uh, we always go into topics and subjects that we didn't always plan. So we're always in the flow. So for those of you who don't know Teresa, she is an international speaker, a spiritual teacher, a mentor, a priestess, a master of the healing arts and angelic channel. And she works with people who feel that they should have attended Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters before being sent out into the world. And she helps them to find the strength in their sensitivity and guides them in the use of these superpowers. And remember, these are superpowers. We can use them to help ourselves, help our communities, help our family and friends and, and help humanity as well. Right. So, um, Teresa, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I also just wanted to say this, like hit me really powerfully before. I just want to say thank you for doing this in the middle of 2020 and everything that's been going on. It really takes a lot of energy and a powerhouse person to be able to hold space like this. So I just really, from the bottom of my heart, wanted to thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I did cancel the show from last week. You know, I rescheduled <laughs> everything from last week. We were like crazy here. We had like a terrorist attack in Vienna, like blocks, blocks from our house. And we're also in the middle of moving. So we uh, we jumped up our move because my husband's like, that's it, we're out. <laughs> you know, so, you know, we don't want to stay in that chaos anymore. And we wanted the peace and quiet and, and the place where we can be ourselves, right? Feel who we are, right? Tap into our guidance, tap into our knowing, right? And be, you know, be fully present. And sometimes when you're in that chaotic energy or in a big city, you know, you can't always tell what's yours and what's not, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that um, today as well. So thank you. And, and thank you, everybody, for all of your uh, emails and comments and feedback. We're all good. We're all fine. Thank you. And um, I really appreciate all of your uh, blessings and your support and your love. I really, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because um, I know when I, when I sent you the email, you were like, oh, my God, are you okay, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I remember I lived right outside New York City when 9-11 happened. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, my dad was like there when it happened. And, and I just remember what that felt like and all of the energy it stirs up. So being a sensitive in a place where this is happening, like I, that's why I was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Because it, there's just so many extra levels for us when yeah. the world gets rocked. Absolutely. So yeah, so all good. Um, but yeah, so, you know, living in the now, let's talk a little bit about that and tell us a little bit about what you mean about living in this now moment and how we can do that with more ease. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you wish everybody would be having this conversation? This yes, is, that would be great. This is a really turbulent time for a lot of people, but in, in honesty, it's the answer to the prayers that we've been sending out and the energy we've been holding. It's the shift of all that hasn't been working. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's shifting, it's moving. We're seeing things that we didn't see before in, in all ways, regardless of what your view of the world is and, and the proper way to run it, you know, and it's been incredible. And one of the things that's really important, and we've been having this conversation in, in my community, is really moving into your feelings in the now moment. You know, as sensitives and as spiritual people, we tend to think of our feelings as, you know, something that's just passing through, mm -hmm. you know, not real. Feelings aren't facts, you know, that's the kind of thing. But the amazing thing about feelings is they hold a key for us. They're showing us an energy that's asking for us to look 
at it, whether it's happiness or sadness, it holds some piece of information for us. And the only way that we can get that information and get the glimmer and the wisdom that that feeling is bringing through us is to really sit with it and, and be with, why am I sad? Or why am I feeling anxious? Or why am I afraid? You know, whatever the feeling is, it's uncomfortable to sit with it a lot of times. Even happiness, a lot of times we're, we're afraid to sit with happiness because we're afraid something's going to come ruin it for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. So being in the now moment really means being with what's present for us now and knowing that our feelings are going to pass through, but that processing them and letting them wash through us. So just think of the ocean, like ebbing and flowing. That's how we want it to wash through instead of it's here, we push it away. Like with a tennis racket, it comes back, we hit it away again. And then eventually when we least expect it, it takes over because that feeling is going to be hurt at some point in your life. So it's either avoid it or be with it. Um, we're also in this now moment, we've been talking for a while about moving out of a, a masculine paradigm and into a more feminine paradigm. And ultimately what we want to do is balance those energies. And we still use the terms masculine and feminine for lack of better terms, but the energy presents itself as, as those feelings and we want them to be balanced. So right now we have to swing into more of the feminine energy and what's happening in the world at large is that people are freaking out a little bit and looking for that father energy that is going to take care of everything, functionally or dysfunctionally, looking for the daddy energy to, to make everything okay. And what we need to do is to really go inside and tap into our own power, our own connection now. There, there is, I keep saying this, there is nothing outside of us that we can hang on to anymore. You know, there's no piece of information that stays true for more than five seconds or that isn't replaced by something new and better. And so this is really our time to go inside, to see what's there, to see what truth and what surprises are waiting for us so that we can move forward from here, building on that energy, taking the wisdom with us and, and moving through this. You know, there, there are no more saviors. No one's coming to save us. It's, it's the power that comes from within mm -hmm. that is going to move us forward. And, and in doing that and in, in stepping into more of that power, we can bring in the balanced masculine energy in a little while, you know? So this is, um, this is kind of what we mean by staying in the now moment, being with the discomfort, being with the joy, being, you know, as it comes, take it as it comes and just be present. Because when we are fully present, in this very moment, regardless of what's going on in the world, when I am in this moment and this moment only, I am not in anxiety. Mm -hmm. I am not in fear. Everything is okay right here in this moment. And if we just string those together, we are okay in every moment. But when we go into the past, we're, we go into anxiety. When we go into the future, we go into fear. So it's really about building from the here and now, because this is where all of the potentials are for everything that we can create. Exactly, it's all here and now, because really, you know, this is where we are creating. We're creating in the now, in this moment. We're not creating in the future. We're not creating in the past anymore, right? We're creating right now. And so how do you want to create? Do you want to create from an empowered place or from fear or lack or scarcity or anxiety? You can't create, you know, uh, from those places, right? You can only create from here and now. And so. It's, you know, I mean, this is, I talk about this all the time too, but being present, being here now, feeling what you are now. And, and when it comes to feelings and emotions, if you stay with a feeling or emotion, it will pass through you within 70 seconds. This is what I have learned in, 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 in my teachings is that within 70 seconds, if you just allow it, it will pass through. So you don't have to worry about, you know, getting, um, what is, what's the, uh, what's the word being like taken over by a feeling, you know? <laughs> yeah right because it's only 70 seconds but if you resist it if you fight against it and you say no I'm not going to do that then it's going to keep coming back but if you just allow it be with it for that be present with it for that 70 seconds it will pass through and you'll get that you're you'll get you know you'll, you'll get your wisdom your knowing etc and then from that place go out and create what are you choosing you know and move forward mm -hmm. right exactly you know it's we're creating 
all the time, mm-hmm. whether we're conscious of it or not. So if we're in a place where we're in anxiety or we're in fear, we're creating from that place. And so you can see a lot of that happening in the world right now, just thought forms creating instantaneously. And then there's all of these swirling thought forms that are at odds with each other, even coming from the same person, right? Like one minute, like, oh my gosh, this is bad. And the next minute it's like, oh, maybe it's good, you know? And so all those thought forms are out there battling each other. And so when we can stay present and create with intention. Now that staying in the present means we can also future vision. We can know the world we want to create and tap into that feeling now Mm -hmm. and create from the place of already knowing it exists. And then we become the bridges from here to there and create the bridges from here to there. And so that's really important also, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to know what it looks like. You just have to know what you want. So if you want peace, you want love, you want everyone to function from a heart centered place. That's the vision you hold. And the, how we get there is irrelevant because things will line themselves up as long as we keep intending to create from Mm -hmm. holding the vision that we want. Absolutely. And you have to know what it is that you want. I was talking about this earlier today with with my own group. And it's like, you have to know, you have to get clear, you have to start asking yourself questions. What is it that you want? And not from a place of lack and scarcity and fear, but from a place of empowerment, from a place of expansiveness, from a place of joy, from a place of um, anticipation, you know, even it's, it's fine, right? But from that place, not from lack and fear, but you have to, you have to have an idea. I mean, you know, we just moved into this new place in the country, you know, just like last week, right? And my husband and I had been looking for months for a place, you know, out in the country. We would, we have driven around like you wouldn't believe, right? We've <laughs> driven around looking at places and stuff for months. And then, but so we, we knew we wanted a place in the country. We didn't know exactly where, but, I, you know, mm-hmm. we knew that a place where Neo could have, you know, free reign, you know, and we have a bit more space kind of thing. And then, last Friday, you know, or last Tuesday, like the Tuesday, like a week ago or two weeks ago, there was a listing that came up. My husband was quick this time for once and he called and made an appointment for Friday. So Friday morning, we saw it Friday evening, we signed the papers, Mm -hmm. right? That's how quick it can be because we knew what we wanted. And it was it was the right thing. And my husband had been saying over and over again, I want to be out of the city by November 1st. I want to be out of the city by November 1st. (laughs) I want to be out of the city. It's like, okay, right? And so it all happened and, you know, it's all great, but we knew that's what we wanted. We had an idea. And for me, it was that expansiveness. I kept saying to him, I want more space. And he's like, what do you mean by that? What do you want? Like, you, you, we're two people. Why do we need more space? It's like, I don't know. I just, I need more expansiveness. I need more space. So here we are in the country, so much space, right? And even in, in our house, we have more space right now than it's like, okay, what do we do with this space? And what do we do with this space, right? But it all worked out. But we had that idea of what we wanted for us and moving forward, right? Yeah. And so that's why it's so, it's so important to know what you want from a, but from a place of expansiveness and what lights you up and makes you feel good. Not from fear, right? Absolutely. And it's, it's important. I've heard the same kind of story with moving like several times in the last month from people. Like I just, I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I knew the feeling that I wanted. And this thing that was better than I could have even imagined just Mm -hmm. showed up. And I knew that I had to act on it immediately and everything worked out in a day. You know, it's so interesting. The, The thing that's really interesting also is we're all being tapped into our lower chakras right now and to see what's there, right? Like we've been seeing that in the world, like all of the stuff that we didn't look at that was, that's been hiding has been coming up for the past few years. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for us to tap in as sensitives, as spiritual people by getting in touch with our desires. And that's very scary for a lot of us because we're not supposed to desire because we're spiritual. We're supposed Mm -hmm. to forego all of that, but we can't create without a desire. A desire cues you into what it is that you want. And so when we're using our intention, which is really, really powerful, we can tune into those desires and manifest from the place of creating what we want, not only for our good, because it's not in our nature to only create for what's good for us. It's in our nature to create what's good for us and for the highest good of all. Mm -hmm. So this is really a time for us to examine 
what's there in terms of desires and go deep. Don't be afraid of going into any area. I just had a conversation with a client and I said, well, what are the three adjectives for the type of relationships you want in your life? And she came up with two. And this is where I love the angels because they'll rat you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? She came up with two and she was hesitating with the third. And she's like, I could tell it was there, but she wasn't connecting with the word because it was a desire that was so deep that she was afraid to tap into. And her angels were saying she wants to feel sexy. She wants to feel tapped into her body and appreciated in that way too. And, and that's awesome because that was something that she hadn't touched on before. And when I said, well, your angels just said this, she's like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's it. You know? And so there are those places where we haven't looked that hold this treasure chest of, of what could potentially come next for us. And, you know, what's interesting is, you know, but my husband and I, we talk a lot, right? But sometimes we don't. And so for him, he, he's like, he's happy to have like a one room. He's like, you know, he's like, he always says, we're all here in one square meter room. Like, why do we need more? And I said, no, I want a separate room for Amanda. I want a separate room for Amanda. You know, Amanda doesn't live in your, I mean, she lives in, in Paris, right? Because she's going to do her master's there. I said, but I want her to have her own room. And um, so, <laughs> you know, for the Friday we signed the papers, the Sunday, she showed up here in Vienna. <laughs> All right, she said, mom, there's lockdown in Paris and there's this and that, you know, can I come to Vienna? It's like, sure, why not? It's like lockdown there, lockdown here, might as well spend it together. And so, and this place has, you know, she has her own separate unit, you know, practically, right? So she has a bedroom, living room, kitchenette, bathroom, totally separate, totally insulated. She has her own space so she can continue to be, you know, to, to do her own thing. And I was like, oh my God, this worked out so well. He had no idea that's what I wanted, you know, that, right. you know, that, right. But the angels knew, the universe knew that that's what I was wanting, you know, cause I kept saying it over again. I want a room for Amanda. I, I, so I was telling the universe, I didn't tell him per se, but I said, okay, I, I, I want to have a room for Amanda, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. Right. I, like, how does it get even better than this? Right. It's like, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have dreamed this up. Right. And right. so that's when you have to like get like, yeah, ask, say what you want from that expansive place, leave it to the universe to bring it forward. And it's like, oh my God, it's like, this is amazing. And so when you are, (laughs) it's just just like, it's just so funny, you know, how that worked out. And she's here and now she's going to be here for two months. And now she might even be here extended because of, you know, just everything that's going on. You're bringing up such a good point. First of all, that was the most perfect definition of marriage I've ever heard. My husband and I talk a lot, but sometimes we don't. Like, that was amazing. Um, And then what I love is that our needs are always anticipated by the universe before Mm -hmm. we even know what they are. So you knew you wanted a a space for her, Mm -hmm. but you didn't necessarily know Paris was going to be in lockdown again, that there was going to be all this situation happening. And universe anticipated that and said, okay, let me provide something that's exactly you know what is needed and yet Lori is just saying ask and manifest this or something better absolutely like Mm -hmm. I create for the year I create a vision board every year I'm a very visual person that's what I do and on on my vision board it says this or something better because Mm -hmm. who am I to think that I know what's the best and you know I just want to share it was so funny because my vision board for this year think about it I created my vision board in December my vision board for this year has a, a picture on it with a woman, like her arms extended and it says virus free. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't know in December that this was a thing, but our intuition, like your intuition knew that this was going to be a thing and that you would need the space. So, so when we ride the smallest waves of our intuition, it ends up just, everything just comes together. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. And yeah, absolutely. This or something better, you know, because we can't always figure out with our minds what something should look like and what is for our highest good. You know, I I was just saying to my group earlier, it's like, don't always listen to what your mind is saying. It doesn't always know what is for your highest good, but put it out to the universe and trust, right? And so when you're talking about living in full trust, right? That's what it's about. It's about, yes, trust your knowing, you know, meaning when you're tapped into your heart space, trust that knowing, as well as trust what's showing up, you know, trust what's showing up that 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 is for your highest good. And that is sometimes, you know, from the universe showing you, yeah, you know, you asked for this. How about this? What do you think of this? Do you like this? Oh, absolutely. I love it. Great. Here you go. Right. So living in full trust means 
you're not always trying to figure out some stuff. You're not always second guessing, right? But you're looking at it and saying, okay, cool. I like this. Thank you, universe. You know, I couldn't have thought of this myself, you know? And so when you're, when you're being in acceptance, being an allowance of it, you're going to receive with more ease as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. And, you know, thank you, bring me more is my favorite. Like whenever there's something in your life that you love, just thank you, bring me more, right? That's it. That's some of the most magical words. And then don't be afraid also if universe provides you with an opportunity and it doesn't feel right to you, don't be afraid to say no, mm -hmm. right? And you can be like, oh, this this piece feels really good, right? You know, I, I like this, but this piece doesn't feel quite, quite right. And then universe is like, oh, she gave us more information. Let yeah. me check, you know, let me add that to the list. And also- what we tend to do is let's just use an example with money. We'll say to universe, okay, I need $1,000, right? And universe is like, really a thousand dollars. And you're like, oh, okay. Or 999, whatever you can spare. That's mm -hmm. our energy. <laughs> and the universe is like, no, no, no. I want you to add three zeros to the end of that thousand, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing. It's our spiritual self-esteem disallows us from asking for the, the, bigness of what universe wants to give to us. And so when we just get in line with the energy and say, okay, this is the energy that I want. These are the feelings I want. Then universe can be like, Oh boy, goody, goody. And here it comes, you know, and, and then we break down some of those barriers about accepting and asking. Yeah. So I just, you know, I know this is like a little bit off topic, but what are you guys asking for? <laughs> right. Are you even asking for something, you know, what, what what desires are you asking for that haven't shown up yet? And the thing is, you know, you're talking about desires earlier, Teresa. And the thing is, mm -hmm. we cannot live without desires. But the mm -hmm. thing is, for spiritual people, etc., it's about having desires but not being attached to them, not right. being attached to how they show up or or how they look or whatever. But it's about having the desires because you, you're creating your living. But, you know, even if you don't have it, you're okay with it. I think it's the, it's the non-attachment, right? So, but we cannot live without desires. I mean, breathing is a desire to live, right? So we have to, like, you know, for us spiritual people, yes, I'm putting my hands up for that one. I am that. But, you know, desires are normal and they're necessary. So please, yes, continue to desire, continue to create but desire from your heart, not from your mind, not necessarily from like comparing other people, that kind of thing, because that, that's not really true. But it's like, you know, getting clear on what do you want? What are your true desires? And that's about tapping into your heart space, tapping into your soul, your being, your core, and saying, what do you want? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And it's not really off topic. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's living in this now moment and how we move humanity forward is by tapping into the desires that we want for ourselves and on behalf of humanity as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I'll share, I've been, my desire has been, and I've really been focusing for the, the last month, especially on peace and love, mm -hmm. peace and love, peace and love in my own life, in the world. And that's the vision I've been holding. And I don't, I, I kept trying to detach myself from, from how that looked in the outside world, because in the end, that's where we need to get to. And I know that's the world that I'm creating. And I know that's the world a lot of you are creating. So, you know, and what does that take? And then there's, you know, there's like the sub desires that come from that. What will it take in my own life to get that? And, you know, yeah. but that's how we hold the vision and that's how we move humanity forward. And, and when we can walk from this now moment and know, despite what's going on, that everything is okay right here. That's when people start to want what you have. Mm -hmm. People will notice and they'll say, oh my goodness, Sherry is, is so at peace and she everything just seems to line up and she's in flow. How do I get that? And they'll start to emulate you. They probably mm -hmm. won't ask, but they'll start to emulate your actions. And that is how we change the world. That is the most powerful way we can change the world is by living mm -hmm. our truth and living in that flow of trust that is our birthright, that flow, that synchronicity, that feeling that we are held in every single moment by our angels, by the divine, by our friends, that is our birthright. And that's how every one of us is supposed to feel. Absolutely. And we are always held and we are always supported. It's about us getting out of our heads and coming back into our energy and back into our heart and connecting. We're always connected. Yes. But focusing on that connection, right? 
focusing on that connection with the divine, focusing on that connection with our angels. It doesn't have to be verbal. It doesn't have to be like a message, but just feeling it, just feeling it and knowing it. And the thing is when we, when we are creating, especially for people like Teresa and I, because we're, you know, more visible, etc. cetera. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're more visible. Um, you know, being, being a teacher or a leader or a mentor of some sort, whatever you are doing, you know, people are watching you, right? So I would rather be an example of someone who is, um, you know, authentic and real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But about choosing and choosing what's right for me. So for me, what's right for me is living out in the country in a peaceful environment that is expansive for me, right? It might not be for everybody, right? But it is for me and I like it. And so when somebody sees me choosing that for myself, they're going to hopefully start to think about, oh, what can I choose for me? You know, can I choose that for myself? What Would I like that? Right. And the thing is, you know, we all look at each other, not as not in comparison, but just like, oh, what is she doing? Oh, what is she doing? What are they creating? You know, and wouldn't that be fun? And the thing is, would it, you know, so so yeah go ahead and stalk my facebook whatever you know instagram whatever. <laughs> that's fine and take a look and see like you know how much fun would you have with a little puppy like neil you know today is our two-year anniversary that we, we got him two years ago today and it's like oh my god he's like the biggest bestest one of the biggest bestest choices i ever made you know he's like such a gift to me and such a contribution i just absolutely love him like oh my god and i can't imagine what my life would be like if he wasn't here Right. So, you know, every day I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that, you know, I chose that. I'm so grateful for my for my children. And so Neo is like my child. I'm so grateful mm. for my husband. I'm so grateful for my friends, my clients, my colleagues, my communities. I'm so grateful. Right. And so when you're having that attitude of gratitude, you know, but it's about when you're being in that state of gratitude and just acknowledging life, life flowing through you right? And every moment, the universe supporting you, guess what happens? The universe is going to support you more because you're, you're acknowledging the support. You're acknowledging the connection. You're acknowledging the relationship. And that's how we move, I think, humanity forward is by, by our examples of us choosing peace, love, compassion, gratitude, whatever it happens to be, right? As we choose that, others see that, and, and we're constantly radiating that out. And they, And if they are tapped into that, then they can choose that as well. Absolutely. Right? And it's standing in our choices, standing in integrity, you know, so, so this is my choice. This is, this is the energy I want to bring in, into our existence and what is in line with that in my life and what isn't, and what am I ready to let go of? What do I need to bring in? And it's the constant asking of these questions for ourselves, you know, and I love what you said about, oh yeah, stalk my Facebook, be inspired. You know, I, I'm a trained artist. I'm a classically trained artist. And, and when I was in art school, you know, you learn, there mm -hmm. is nothing that is not inspired by something else. You yeah. know, one of my friends just used to flat out copy our work and just call it inspiration. But, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not that it's like, there's always an inspiration when you're observing what's going on around you, when you're observing other people doing what you want to be doing, you know, there's, there's inspiration that comes with that. So that's amazing. And, you know, what may be right for you in this moment, like, you know, maybe, maybe I feel called, like, I don't know why I just, feel called to be a vegetarian maybe that works for you right now and maybe a year from now something else works for you or work, working like working at home works for you now and maybe you'll want to do something else later like it's about checking in with ourselves constantly seeing what we need to support our experience here on this planet to feel alive so that we can hold the joy that we are here to hold so that we can hold the higher vibration and be that energy grounded to this planet because joy is the highest vibration we can currently hold. You know, I expect that will be changing in the near future, but for right now it's still joy. And, and so we're not going to get there every day, like honestly human experience. But what we can do is start to climb out of the hole by reaching for the next feeling up the, the ladder mm -hmm. as, as we go. And it's important. And I used to have this friend, Joe, who we would be together. He was much older. You know, he was probably in his eighties when I was in my twenties and, and we'd be wherever. And he'd just stop. And he, I'd say, Joe, what's going on? He'd be like, oh, I'm just having a gratitude attack. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's something I've taken with me because there are those moments where I'm just so overwhelmed with gratitude sometimes mm -hmm. that, that, you know, I think of Joe, he's gone now, but I think of Joe and, and I think of, oh my gosh, I'm having a gratitude attack. And so being with that, like if I wasn't in that moment, I would miss that, you For know? Sure. Yeah. And so, so that's the magic of being present with what you're feeling is, is it happens on all sides of the spectrum. And as we open to the feelings that aren't so great, we open more to the feelings that are amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the, the spectrum for us. And that's the, the duality is we need to be open to one side of the spectrum to be fully open to the other as well. I love that. And you know, you're right. It's like, you know, in the past, I know I used to numb myself, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel the pain, right. I didn't want to feel the discomfort. I didn't want to feel, you know, anything. And so then I didn't feel anything. Right, I, I was numbing the bad stuff, but, but, but which in turn made me not feel anything. And there was a time I remember when I was like, I was seriously worried. It's like, I don't feel anything in my heart. Like, like do I even love anyone? And it's like, you know, and it's like, okay, I definitely love my kids. I, de I can definitely say that I love my kids for sure, but I could not feel anything for anybody else, you know, at that time, right? And, and then, you know, but, but let's face it, I was suppressing. A lot of stuff right I was I mean I've had a, a shit life so it's like I was suppressing a lot of stuff but once I started to uh, heal all that and let it come up and let it surface and you know acknowledge it etc now I can feel so much more right because I, I'm, I'm willing I'm, I'm allowing it yeah and I Alara in your experience I think is important because part of why we disconnect from those feelings is because they're too overwhelming. And what our body does for us so graciously, and this is one of my favorite things about our bodies and what they do, they hold the toxins, including emotions for mm -hmm. us until we're ready to process them. So if you're like, okay, I, I know I have a lot in there and I have to go through it. It's not like your body's going to be like, here it is, here all of it is. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. going to come up in a at a pace that you can deal with one piece at a time. And sometimes you might feel overwhelmed, but that's what your divine team is for. That's what, you know, sometimes you might need to bring in a therapist or a counselor or a coach. You know, that's what you assemble a team for is to help you move through those sticky parts. But, you know, it's always surprising to me how when we don't want to deal with something and then we, we say, okay, we're going to do it. It's like, we expected it to be such a huge mountain. And it's not Mass. often that way. It's like, yeah. this is what I was avoiding for 10 years. Why? You know, <laughs> yeah. 20, 25, 30. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and exactly. so, you know, and, and right now I know a lot of people are still being challenged by the whole COVID thing, the economy thing, the, oh, yeah. um, the election thing, and God knows what else. There's so many things that we could be affected by right now. And so right now is a great time for all of us to really connect with our divine team, with our angels, so and allow them to support us, right, yeah. as we move forward. So how can we do that, just really quickly? How can we, you know, call in our divine team, call in our angels, and, um, and, and, and ask them to assist us? Because let's face it, right now, we still need some help, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, humans are social creatures, right? So we're always going to need help. And we're always going to need help. For those of us who are spiritual, sometimes it's much easier for us to connect with the unseen realms, you know, than it is for us to connect with other people, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's also, I have to say, much more comfortable to connect with pets, yeah. you know, and, and animals, because they're, they're just so loving. Um, so all we need to do is to connect with our angels, our divine team is just ask. You know, mm -hmm. even to connect with our higher self, it, it involves just asking. And, and sometimes when we're really feeling on our knees, all we have to say is, I really need you right now. And that's it. They, they're always there. They're just waiting. They're, they're literally sitting next to me at this table, tapping their fingers, waiting for me to ask them for something just like they are for you. Right. It's, that's all we have to do. And as soon as you talk to your angels as soon as you talk to your divine team they are in celebration because your angels all they want is to assist you they mm -hmm. want to assist you to be in more peace to feel more love than you presently do so so that you can hold that energy and live the life that you desire and feel alive in this experience because even if you are someone who resonates with the idea of 
reincarnation, you only have one life in this beautiful body that you've chosen this time around. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like, let's, let's live it. Let's actually live it and be present with it. And, you know, right now there have been a lot of people asking, how can I hear my angels? How can I interpret signs? So we'll talk a little bit about that, but Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of worldly concerns right now. So I I wanted to share, like we work, when we work together primarily with the archangels and our guardian angels, Mm -hmm. but right now we can be calling on the seraphim. They are the divine fire, love, and light angels, um, the dominions who channel the love of the divine through mercy and they help uh, dissolve oppression they rule over the place where the physical and the spiritual meet. So exactly what we're trying to manifest, where the physical energy and the the thought and the vision we've been holding meets physical manifestation. That's the power of the dominions. They can reside there and help transmute any misinformed energy. And then the virtues can like completely suspend the laws of nature to work miracles and bring about the highest and best. And so the virtues are really needed right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And then also for all of us in in nations all around the world, the principalities that, that watch over nations and countries and, you know, all of those divisions that we see in, in land and help us to come to more unity consciousness and, and inspiration about how to work together. So those are just some of the realms that are, just waiting for us that we never even think to call on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So right now that's important. Yeah. I mean, I I work with the seraphim, but uh, you're right. I I have not called on the dominion or the virtue angels very often. So you know what? That might be next on my list as well. So thank you for that. Um, M, M is asking or saying, I keep calling on my team and never feel or notice changes. My dog needs help with healing, a bad infection in my body hurts so much I can't even sit on my sit bones. I must be doing something wrong in my prayers. No. No. No, you're not doing anything wrong. There's a couple of things that feel important here, and and this is more universal. Um, One of the things I'm feeling for you, and this is, you're actually the second person this has come up with in, in, in our physical bodies it feels like there's energy of holding on in, in your system, like an energy of, of just holding on to maybe a vision of the past or something in the past that you might want to get back to. So it's preventing you from being fully present. So I I'm just inviting you to explore that, you know, it's, it, that's for you. Um, for your dog, Call on Archangel Ariel and Archangel Raphael. Those are, are the angels that will be able to work <laughs> and your dog is saying Gabriel too. Your dog is like, no, I work with Gabriel too. So, um, so those are the angels that will be the most able to work with your dog. And also I see you have healing hands. So, you know, you have power in your hands just and touch, touch your dog with that loving healing energy. That's what we do as parents, whether it's mm-hmm. fur babies or human babies, right? The first thing we do when our babies are hurting is we place our hands on the area that's hurting. So it's it's natural, it's normal. Um, and your team is saying that they keep leaving you signs, but you're missing them, or you're not able to see them in the way that they're leaving them. So what they want you to do is to tell them how you are comfortable interacting with them. You know, do you, are you comfortable finding feathers or are you comfortable actually hearing their voices or seeing them? And to what degree are you comfortable? Like, do you want to hear a booming voice or do you just want to, to have a gentle nudge and feel feathers on your skin? Like, let them know what would feel the most comfortable to you, because that's the cue that your angels take. They don't want to scare us. They don't want to send us running and shut down our gifts again, because a lot of us shut down our gifts because we were overwhelmed at a, an earlier point in our life. So they want to help you open your gifts. So start telling them what would feel good to you. And what I'm seeing is for all of us, as we've been asking the angels for help with world events, we might not be seeing direct results yet because the energies are still being moved. There's a lot of energies. There's a lot of healing, a lot of awareness that is still coming up. And they've been showing us that starting 
as the calendar turns to 2021, some of the seedlings we've been planting are growing and we'll just need to tend to those and focus on, on those again, with the love of a mother, you know, tending to her garden or her children. So, um, let us know if that resonates for you, Em, because that feels really important. You've done nothing wrong. In fact, you are a powerhouse. Your prayers are so powerful. Um, so, so just know that they're being heard and answered. They just need to know how it would feel more comfortable to you to have more interaction. Mm -hmm. And that's that, that was a great message for all, all of us, right? For any of you who are wanting to work more closely with your angels and guides and spirit, you know, listen to what Teresa just said, right? Tell them how you would like to receive the messages, receive the insights, you know, what would feel good to you. Now, and, and I know some of you are going to say, well, I, I want to hear it, but are you really willing to hear it? Or are you going to be scared the first time you hear something? You know, get real. I don't think I want to hear it. You know, I have heard things in the past and they didn't freak me out per se, but it was a little spooky, you know? So just, you know, be real, be honest. Um, yeah. So uh, Caroline or Carolyn, sorry, is saying, I'm looking to use my gifts in the world, unemployed, but looking to harvest the seedlings planting now, but in which direction? There are so many. I love this question, Caroline, mm -hmm. because <laughs> I get asked this a lot and, um, I myself am someone who's completely multi-passionate. So I can completely relate <laughs> to the question that you're asking. Um, and what it feels like the angels are always saying when we have this question, and they're saying this to you as well. They're saying, what would bring you the most joy right now? What in all of the things you could potentially do? Like if you didn't have to make money and show up in a certain way in the world, what would you do? Like, you know, would you dance through the woods all day? And if that's the case, then what could you do that would make you feel the same kind of energy, right? And that's that's really what they want you to tap into right now is, is how do you want to feel every day? And is there a way that would bring you the closest to that feeling? And when you hand them the nice little package that says, this is how I want to feel, then things will start coming through and getting clearer. You know, there, there are times where my work shifts and it's like, okay, well, you have all these tools. We're going to go this way now, right? Even though you like doing this, we need you to go this way. How can we do this in a way that makes you feel really good? And then you start working with your team in what's created next. Yeah, absolutely. I love that question. Thank you. Um, L is asking, are there portals in our house or on our property that are negatively affecting our thoughts and guidance? And if so, how can we close them for good? Lovely. Um, so what I, what I see as portals is, is like energy that's been there from previous experiences on your property. And so what I see you doing is just setting a very strong intention of clearing these old energies that are no longer resonant from your property. It's almost like if you are holding an energy in your body that is preventing your growth and you go for a healing session, that energy can be broken up and released. And so it feels like you getting really clear on your own power and your own intention and saying, I'm literally hearing you say this. If there is any energy that is of anything less than the highest intention for good on our property, you must be gone now and send it away, send the energy away. And you can call on, I always, when I'm doing work like this, we'll call on the legions of light, the band of mercy and any, any specific masters or deities that, that resonate for you to help escort any reluctant energies out as well, because some of the energies might not know where to go next. So I always will say, go back to where you came from and, and set the intention that this work is done completely and irreversibly. And that's it. You're done. And that is a great um, process for everybody, actually, you know, to to ask, you know, to, to check out for yourself. I mean, we just moved into this property. It's old. So, you know, there might be some energies here. Um, I haven't checked, but <laughs> I might. Right. So um, do that, you know, look into that for yourself as well. Um, OK, one second. Da, 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 da. All right, cool. So everyone's just typing in their questions. So Teresa says, can you please tell me what the angels say about the growth by my left eye? What am I hiding from myself in plain view? Did announce um, 
enough with health concerns, but it seems like I wasn't heard. Thank you. Mm. Teresa, you are always heard. Your angels, I, I literally see your angels putting a blanket around you and holding you through this um, and through all of the things. I've seen you grow so much in the time I've known you and I've seen you set such strong intentions and send so much love out into the world. And it does feel like some of this is a collective energy for you that you're processing through your body in some way. And I want to also share with you if they, they, when they show me an experience from my own life, I'm called to share it because it's, it's speaking to what you're going through. Um, before COVID happened, you know, before COVID became a big thing in, in the United States and kind of took over the whole world, uh, I had one day where I woke up and my eye was bleeding. And I was like, what is going on here? But it ended up just being that one day, this one situation and some sort of energy was processing through my body, whether it be a germ or the collective energy of fear or whatever it is. So um, when you are working with your eye and, and a lot of people in the last eight months have had eye situations. So I wanna share this for, for everyone, including those of you who are healers and seeing clients and friends with this. Um, it feels like Teresa, place your hand on your eye and send love to the collective, send love to all of the places that people are trying to stuff things back into shadow. And in doing so for the collective, you're also doing so for yourself. And it feels like this starts to reverse itself very quickly. So, so keep us posted on your progress and, and how that's working for you. Let us know if that resonates. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Um, Laura says, hi, Teresa. I'm currently blocked in creating visions for the outcomes I desire, where the outcome also relies on other people's decisions. I feel very positive about it, but I'm concerned about the blocks of my visioning. So that's a, that's a great question, especially the part about, you know, about something relying on other people's visions. You know, that's, that's a big block for a lot of people. It is. And, and I, this is why I love, and we have a love hate relationship with divine timing, right? <laughs> so like, <laughs> let's be honest. And so for, for you, what I see is you're actually very clear on what you desire. Like I, I'm seeing you being very clear and putting energy into it, like actively putting energy into it. And, and the frustration of being like, why am I still doing this? Because it's not manifesting. And there's all these other pieces and parts that seem to come into play. Mm -hmm. But like Alara was saying before, they knew they wanted to live in the country, didn't know where they wanted to live in the country, but just would spend hours driving around looking, right? Mm -hmm. But then the right thing came up, intuitive hit. I acted like someone who doesn't act very quickly, usually acted very quickly and everything lined up. And yeah. it feels like that's what happens to you too. It feels like divine timing is making sure that not only does the timing have to be right for you, it has to be right for the planet and every person you're going to touch with what you're creating. And so I don't feel it's very long now. I feel like I feel like within the next two months, you start to see manifestations of all of this, but it's just a matter of keep putting the energy in because this time really is important. It's like us revving a motor, right? We're revving the motor, revving the engine, warming it up. And then once it, once it gets traction, you're going. And that's what I feel for you, Laura. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I remember way back when, when um, I was, you know, making a decision about, you know, leaving my ex-husband. And I remember mm -hmm. like, thinking, you know, um, I don't know if I should do this because, you know, I have young kids, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I remember somebody saying to me at that time that if you're coming from your heart space, not from your head, but if you're coming from your heart space, if it's for your highest good, it will be the high for the highest good of everyone involved. Right. So I trusted that and then I moved forward and it, and it turned out to be you know, really good. Everything was perfect, right? Um, you know, separation divorce is never is never wonderful, but we did it really well, and because um, uh, we wanted the least amount of pain and uh, discomfort for the children and everything, so it all worked out. But that's what I had to come back to. You know, so whenever I'm, I have a question where there's other people involved, I always come back to my heart space. How does it feel in my in my heart 
not in my head, not logically, not anything like that, but how does it feel in my heart? If it feels good, and if, you know, then I'm gonna trust that. I'm gonna trust that knowing and knowing that if it's, if it's good, if it's for my highest good, it will be for the highest good of everybody else involved. Mm. And right, and that's always worked really well for me. So I just thought I'd share that. That's beautiful. And you know, one of the gurus I've studied with in my lifetime always said, if you are coming from your heart, no matter what action you take, you could make the biggest mistake. It always works out for the best because mm-hmm. your intention was to come from the heart in the first place. And so that's what I find really comforting when we're not sure about what path just coming from our heart. Like we have that power to come from our heart and everything, regardless of whether we take a misstep, will all work out for the highest good, no matter what we have to walk through to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So Jennifer, uh, what is the best way to let go of being a victim to your emotions? Hmm. Hmm. (sighs) Jennifer, I love this question. And there's a couple of things. One of the first things is, is feeling them. Um, letting them process through is a big thing because what happens when we don't do it is they keep coming back. And that, you know, so if we don't fully process it, it's going to come back to get worked through. And so that takes a lot more time than if we just work with them as they present. And so in Alara's example before of, of the layers of clearing that she was doing in her own system, when they came up, she worked with them and then the next one would present. But she was working from a place of knowing that this was clearing and not from a place of pushing it away and having it come back and just take her time and energy. You know, it does take energy to clear this stuff and to process mm-hmm. it through. But honestly, if, if you sat down, right, if, if you felt the urge to cry for some reason and you just put it off and put it off and kept stuffing it down versus if you sat down and like had a boogery mess of a cry At the end, you feel tired because you spent all that energy, but you also feel exhilarated because there's so much more room in your system for other kinds of energy. You're not stuffing that in there anymore. Um, So that's number one. But the other thing, Jennifer, that I feel in your system particularly, um, and this is true for a lot of us, is that you come from a long line of victim consciousness. You know, this is a pattern that was learned and relearned over generations, and it served at some point for survival, right? And now it's bothering you so much because it's ready to, to go. It doesn't need to be present anymore because you don't need to survive in the same way. So the angel's question is anybody who feels that they do come from a line of victim consciousness, are you ready to let this go and to have something else be your truth? So just if, if your answer is yes, just say yes. as the beautiful archangels of the healing energy fields come into your space and they find, oh, it's beautiful. It's this beautiful thread of DNA and they just hold it in their hand and they just pull it like this, boink, like a hair. And then Archangel Ariel floats down this beautiful, new, strong DNA that allows us to come from our own power to truly be co-creators in our world and anchors it into the space where this old patterning was released with gratitude and love for those who had brought it to us. And so just breathe deeply, breathe that and breathe into your first chakra, the base of the spine. And invite that energy in to assimilate, to weave itself through your cellular structure. As we send love and gratitude in all directions of time to our whole genetic line for getting us to where we are in this moment. So I invite Jennifer and all who have invited this healing, this shift in to stay really well hydrated for the next couple of days so that this energy can continue to root in more and more deeply. Sometimes when we release old patterns, 
when our behaviors, like, so, so there's a stimulus that happens. Our system goes to look for the old program and it's not there anymore. And our system goes, what do I do? Like, what, what do I do now? Right. So it's almost like if you have a Microsoft word file and you're trying to open it on your computer, but you don't have word. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you have to find the workaround and what, what is true now. And so your system might just need a couple of days to, to find that new path, those new neural pathways um, for behavior after a stimulus. So let us know if that resonates for you, Jennifer. Good. Thank you, Jen. Um, all right, we're going to take a few more questions in a minute, but I want to talk a little bit about the package that you have for us to this time around, Teresa. So for those of you who are on the live page, you could just click on special offer. And those of you who are not, you can go to laura.at forward slash show forward slash Teresa 11. <laughs> yep. I'm going to put the link in the chat here as well. All right, so um, I know part of it is the same as before, but part of it's not. So let's talk about it. Right. Awesome. I'm going to go to the link so that, that I can actually uh -huh. see it. Um, <laughs> okay. The, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember it's, it's, I know the, the Unseen Realms course is like super powerful. I have, I have seen so many people start to develop beautiful relationships with their angels and the fairies and the dragons and the unicorns, even as a result of this, these classes. Mm -hmm. And it's been beautiful because this course, this four part series really kicks off a relationship that just keeps growing and it invites us to develop these relationships in a way that is full of joy and is full of play so that we can call on these realms to support us personally and to support the world and everyone here and, and even work on connecting, you know, our, our beautiful family and friends with, with their realms. So that's been a lot of fun. I know when I was putting the course together, we were taking a walk and, you know, there was this like little fairy door in a tree and, and my husband was like having the best time connecting with the fairies. Just, you know, he didn't even do the course. It was just because we were creating it and it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Cute. So then the second item is the next level meditation package. And this consists of three meditations that are really timely. They'll bring you a lot of clarity, a lot of relaxation and a deeper sense of purpose. So for those of you who are asking, like my, my life is shifting, my work is shifting. How do I connect in with what's true for me now? This is a great pathway to do that. The three meditations are attuning to your next level, meditation for deep release and integration and releasing trauma with the angels. So a lot of this will release what's old so that you can start to clearly see the path to what's new. Mm. Um, and then item number three, and this is so fun. This is the 28 days of love. And so for 28 days, we'll be gathering in an online forum and I will be daily sending energy to everyone who is in this 28 days of love group to help us to deeply nourish ourselves and love ourselves up for the new energy that is coming with 2021. So we're going to go from December 1st to December 28th, daily energy work, daily communication with our community in this group to really set the intention for starting the next year from a place of love. Last year, the angels said, okay, we're going to do this. And it's going to be called 28 days of shift. You need to be ready to hit the ground running as light workers when 2000 hits, uh, 2020 hits. And I was so grateful this year when they were like, guess what? You're doing it again. And it's going to be, we're going to love ourselves up. I was like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not another year like this year. So, um, so you'll have supportive community. We'll, I'll be going live in the forum once a week. There'll be an online forum and daily energy transmissions. So let's spend the entire month getting ready to live in the 5d that's mm -hmm. coming closer next year. So that is the package. There's those three items with little pieces of, of everything. And the, the investment is $97. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much it. for letting me share that here. No, it, that's brilliant. And I love the 28 days of love. And, you know, at, at the end of the year, that really is what we need to fill ourselves up with love so that we can start the new year fresh and energized and revitalized, right? And refreshed. So I love that, but not just that, like th those three meditations, I love how they're like 
really short, you know, like 25 minutes instead of like an hour or two hours. So, I mean, let's face it, nobody has time to sit and listen to something for two hours and anymore. We just don't, we just don't have time. We're busy. And these, these meditations are going to help you to shift and clear so that you can move forward with more ease. I love that. And then of course, you know, the fairies, as you were talking about the fairy doors, like, Oh, I want to get a fairy door. I want to, perfect for your new place I know right I want to get a fairy door that'd be so cute (laughs) yeah so we actually talk about how to set up space for fairies to invite fairies in so you might want to listen to that one let me know if you do um (laughs) yeah it's it's all about setting up space for fairies and what can and can't be in their space and what they love and what they don't like so much (laughs) exactly so if if um if you have questions about the package let us know just type in the question in the chat I mean no one has raised their hand which is really amazing that, that nobody wanted to be like online you know we just had questions in the in the chat this whole time um but if you have questions about the package let us know and if you and if there's other questions that i missed i will check but jen um report reported back she said resonates very deeply i saw all my ancestors standing around me filled Mm. with love good awesome Mm. beautiful and And what I love about doing this kind of work, first of all, I just want to touch on what you said about the meditations being, what I love about working with angels is they can get in there, get the job done fairly quickly. Like, and, and the divine dispensation of being able to do that now, as opposed to like the years we would have been working on our stuff, like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, (laughs) And I also just want to say that as we clear for ourselves, like Jen just brought us to, we clear in all directions of time for the people who have lived in the past Mm -hmm. and the people who will come after us. And that is such a thing of beauty. It's like we're offering love from the here and now in all directions of time to nourish our ancestors and our future, our future relatives at the the same way that they develop that behavior that's now maladaptive to, to help us survive. And so like that all started out of love and necessity, just like we're doing now, but with more, with more choice than just creating something that is, is, oh my gosh, I need to do this, you know, Mm -hmm. out of survival instinct. Yeah, absolutely. So please, you know, do take a look at the, the offers, the offer, the offer, um, the package from Teresa as well. And so the 20 days of love, it starts December 1st, I guess. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 20. Okay. Yep. We're going for the first 28 days of, of December. And it's beautiful. What I love also is the amplification at this time of year because of all of the festivals of light that are happening. So, yeah. so great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So RB Standing Bear uh, had a question. I don't know if you, if you're still here, but she's saying, I should know her name by now, but can't remember right now. I'm struggling to really start my work, which requires me finding my voice. So what is blocking me and others from receiving and also speaking our truth? Great question. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful. So it feels like I'm tuning into you right now. So when you're, you're asking for yourself and on behalf of others, so I'm going to say this is going to touch a lot of souls. One of the first things feels like old ideas of what's acceptable Mm -hmm. and how we as spiritual people should appear or we as in a masculine body or a feminine body or in a body that's in between, like how we need to present ourselves to the world. So it feels like there's a little bit of hitched energy in in relation to those things. So that's the first thing I'll say, because you know how to work through those things. Like you are are good with that. The second thing is um, clarity. So it feels like part of what's happening is the message that you're being prepared to bring to the world and the voice that you're finding, the world isn't ready to hear yet, right? The clarity of your message, it feels like is developing right now. And your message is going to be deeply powerful at the moment the world is ready to hear it. But for right now, it feels like there's energy opening up within you. There's energy opening up within the world so that the message is being molded and the world is being primed. So don't think you're doing anything wrong. Just continue doing the healing work, continue setting the intention, continue doing vocal exercises even, like chanting, singing, 
speaking your name, like chanting mm-hmm. your name is probably one of the most powerful things that you can do. And, and there definitely is a hitch in there too, by the way, because Alara was like, I can't remember her name right now. So, so that's, there's an energy there of, of fear of visibility. Mm-hmm. So continue to work through the energies as the message builds in you, as it crafts you, as it grows you, as well as the world is primed to hear it. Awesome. And that's for everybody, actually. That's a great message for everybody, right? So keep honing your vision, keep honing your truth. What is that for you? But at the same time, keep like share a little bit, you know, and keep practicing that. Keep doing the exercises to open up that um, throat chakra, right? So that you can be more visible, right? You can speak your truth. And it's not always about speaking, but being the truth of who you are, right? It's about being, you know, because that's what you're radiating out, you know, is, is that energy, that vibration. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so there's a, just, something I know, right. Um, Dave key says, Teresa, I'm in a crossroads regarding the way forward in my career. Would this become more clearer in the near future? I ask for directions and look for signs, but don't get much. This feels like it will become more clear, but it also feels like it will become more clear as you tune into what brings you joy now. Not what brought you joy five years ago or where you think you should be at this point in your life, but really asking yourself um, what brings me joy now and, and unpacking that and being with that with your divine team and your angels. That feels really, really important um, for you right now. Um, So Carolyn was asking about um, asking the angels for help reconnecting family members with differing political views. Any ideas? Ah, (laughs) I'm laughing because, oh my gosh, this is like Thanksgiving is coming up in the US and Mm -hmm. this has been like the thing. First of all, I just want to go back for a second, Mm -hmm. because this is a very important question. But what you were saying about it doesn't always have to be speaking, Mm -hmm. using your voice, you can stand for what you want and and speak that way too. not all of us are people who are going to be out on soapboxes, you know, speaking. Um, And one of my favorite quotes ever is by Emerson. And it says, who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. And so that's really important. And we've seen a lot of that energy in 2020 as like spiritual teachers pulled onto things. And, you know, it was just, it's just a very interesting year of, for all of us who you are speak so loudly, I can no longer hear what you're saying. And um, yeah. Oh, Carolyn was just reading Emerson today. So, so let's go back to the question of uniting, um, uniting family members. And and so there's an energy here, I have to say to you, of the role of peacekeeper and over responsibility for helping everyone to get along that you're being called to just drop. It's like, like, just like you're wearing a robe, just drop it. Right. And, and it's like, yeah, okay. I want everybody to get along, but you're not going to change people's minds. You're not going to change what's in their heart. So, so it feels like being as much of an example of peace and love as you can be without taking the responsibility to need to make it happen mm-hmm. feels important. And that feels like a growth point for you in terms of setting boundaries with your own energy. And, and that's for a lot of us, right? The political division um, and division in a lot of other ways is going to continue for a little while because we're really coming up against the energy of duality and people focusing in one of two extremes and not being willing to look for a middle ground. So for those of us who are sensitive spirituals who want to help humanity get more into that middle ground again, we need to lead by example. So for me, I can speak for myself. I know that I am very strongly opinioned about things that happen in the world and and happen politically. And I have my own opinion, but the, the stretching point for me is to listen to another person's opinion with my ears on of what caused the person to get to this place. Mm -hmm. Because if I listen long enough from that place, what I find is we have the exact same concern. It's just our life experience has led us to look at it from different perspectives. And 
we have to be very, very careful. And this is what's been happening a lot. We've been talking a lot about this year, canceling other people. We can't negate mm -hmm. the life experience of another person. They have gotten to where they are through their experience and whether or not where they are feels right or wrong to us, that's their lived experience that we cannot negate. So we have to be very careful to honor their lived experience and try to help them open a door to see something else that's possible. I hope awesome. that makes sense. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so Laura was asking, and this, I, I think this is a cute, cute question, question and I don't think anyone's ever asked that on the show before. Can you explain the difference between fairy and a pixie? There's a, a slightly different energy. So a lot of times mm -hmm. you'll see the pixies are the ones that you see like dancing from flower to flower in the forest. Those, those are the pixies. Fairies come in all sizes, right? I've, I've had experience in the last few years with fairies that are like six feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they come in all sizes and the fairy energy tends to be much more of like, we're talking like black or white, you know, do you love the environment or you don't? And if you don't love the environment, we don't want to bother with you. Like they're very much, if you violate that relationship, they're gone. Right. So that's the energy. And the pixies are pretty much like, oh, flower is like, they're much more with nature. And, and the fairies are also with nature, but they, the fairies don't like to be <sighs> part of a human's experience unless they feel really safe. And the pixies, you can just see much more readily. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> awesome. Good. Thank you. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I missed. <clears throat> Wow, yeah, great, great questions today, by the way, everyone. Great questions. I love it. Um, I think there was something. There was something from somebody that I'm missing. Uh, yeah, is, was there anything else, Teresa, that is coming to you? I'm just, I'm just looking at something in the in the chat. Uh, Clear starting work supplement. Okay. Um, what feels very important is a lot of people have been asking the question over and over. Like, I feel like I'm so close to hearing my angels, seeing them, experiencing them. What can, what can I do to move that along? Mm -hmm. And this is part of the shift that we're experiencing right now, right? So our tendency is to reach out for connection, like sit for meditation and reach up or reach out. Mm -hmm. um, and what's happening right now is that process is shifting for us, which is why so many people have been feeling disconnected. You know, the religious people can't go to their houses of worship. The spiritual people can't reach out to connect anymore. We have to come in. We have to be with ourselves and go inside and then make that connection from inside of ourselves. So that's shifted and changed. Um, when we do that, the biggest mistake I see people making and trying to connect with the angels is trying to hear them. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we need to do, it's almost like instead of revving the engine, like we talked about before, we need to put the car in park and we need to still ourselves. And it's in that stillness that we can then mm -hmm. make the connection. Okay. And I have to say, like Alara said before about like, do you really want to hear them? Because they might scare you, like if, if it's that loud. And that was my first experience. My first experience, the whole entire bedroom lit up and I heard my name called. And I was like, you know, under the blankets like this, <laughs> like, what was that? You know, yeah. but that was a lightning awakening. And so from there, it gradually opened up more and more. And so the best advice I can say is if you feel like you're close, where are you not stilling yourself? How can you, even if you're running or painting, mm -hmm. how can you get yourself, your energy into more of a still point so that you can connect even further? And so that feels really important because that's the big shift that we're making. That's part of the huge shift is reaching out, seeking from outside of us. It's, it's coming inside coming to that place of our own power our own magic that's that's the biggest shift that we're living through right now beautiful i love that and the thing is we all are magic you know 
it's not just that we have magic within us, we are magic. And when we connect to that energy, that the, the being of, of who we truly are, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you will feel that, you know, I mean, like for me, um, I'm more of a feeler, right? So I feel a lot of energies as they're flowing through. And as I'm feeling the energies, I'm getting the messages, but it's more of a knowing. I don't always hear as much anymore, but I see or I have a knowing and I feel the energies flowing. So it's different, right, for everybody. But I did used to hear back when I was younger. And yeah, it, like I was a little nervous, you know, to be mm-hmm. honest, right? I was a little nervous. And so that's why, you know, they stopped. They're like, okay, she's not ready for that. Right. But feeling I have no problem with Get, getting a knowing, you know, and getting, you know, little snippets of uh, images or whatever. It works. Right. And the thing is, you know, for me, like this um, COVID situation hasn't been too bad because I'm I'm a loner. You know, I like being alone. I, I go into the stillness within myself. I don't have to go anywhere like I'm, I'm Indian. I'm Hindu. And so for us, our body and our home is our temple. We don't have to go anywhere for our religious practices or anything like that, you know, for right. practices, it's always all within. So, but the thing is now it's like for all of us, it is, it is about taking that time to breathe and be and just connect to our heart space or you can connect to nature, whatever works for you, but it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, somewhere else that you can't reach. You know, we all can touch a tree, right? We can all can see a tree, right? I I think there's parks nearby that you can go to, you know, you're allowed to do that. Right. So, you know, we can do that. And that is also, that is also the universe. That is also spirit. That is also creator. If, if that is what you would like to do, but just, you know, put your hands on your heart, feel your heartbeat. That is the, that is, as I'm saying this now, I'm just being like uh, overwhelmed with this feeling of like so much, peace and stillness and grace that's all you have to do to connect it doesn't have to be more complicated than that okay i know i'm like i've got i've got tears i've got chills i was like ah! that was you just saw a live gratitude attack <laughs> <laughs> right so please there's no excuse anymore about that you can't you can just put your hand on your heart go within call on spirit, say, God, please help me, or whatever word name you'd like to use, Archangel Michael, you know, the universe, whatever, please help me. That's, you don't have to like hear the message, but know that once you ask, can you please help me? They are doing it. Absolutely. You're being helped and you're being supported. Be willing to receive, be willing to receive that. Mm. (laughs) So the guides are saying, okay, be quiet. Let, Let Teresa talk. There's um, there's an important piece to what you just said. You said, when I was younger, I used to hear. Now it's more of a knowing. And I, I love that because that's the thing. So many people are like, I want to see the angels. I want to hear the angels. Or like whatever it is, you want to open your psychic gifts and you have an idea of the one you want to open. But that one might not be the one that comes most naturally to you. So it's about really tuning into what comes the most naturally to me. And very often you've overlooked it your whole life because it is so natural to you. So, you know, for you, it was when you were a kid, it was, it was hearing. And as you learn to trust the hearing, like if, if your gift is hearing your natural gift, as you learn to trust that and move with it, the other ones start to open up, Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's just natural. They just start to open up because you've learned to work with one. They can't all open up if you're not trusting the one that is predominant. So if you're asking, how do you see them? How do you hear them? It's it's like, okay, so what is your predominant gift? Do you just know things? Do you actually see orbs or colors? That's one of the ways angels present themselves to us that is very benign. It's like seeing pops of color, or even if that, if they feel like that might be too scary to you, it's like, seeing the same color over and over, like someone wearing a sweatshirt, a certain color, and then a truck, that color. And it's like, oh, wow, that's weird. I saw a lot of indigo blue today. What's that about? You know? Um, And so it's really important for us to realize that, you know, and, and from there, if you're seeing orbs and pops of color, or you're hearing high pitched tones, Mm -hmm. or you just know information, when you work with that, and you start to really trust it, you can then have the conversation, okay, I think I'm ready for the next thing, you know, or if, 
you wake up and you see a giant winged being at the bottom of your bed. Okay, too much, guys, too much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you have to let them know what yeah. feels comfortable to you and they will adjust to that. They don't want us, they oh, keep saying to us, it doesn't help to have your gifts shut down anymore. Like we need you to step into all of who you truly are. And we're here to support you with that. So let us know what works yeah. for you. And if, you know, if you, people always ask this question and Kat is asking this question, you know, what are my gifts to offer the world? But the thing is, you know, what do you like to do? What brings you joy? And like Teresa said earlier, if money was not an object, you know, like, like if, if money was not in the picture, what would you do? What would you like to do? How would you spend your day? And when I think about that, I'd be doing this. I'd be doing more of this, you know, but I'd be doing this. I would be inspiring people, empowering people, doing coaching, doing healing. That's what I would be doing. So I'm already doing it. <laughs> yeah. Right. A lot of times, Alara, we can't see our gifts because they're so innate to us. So sometimes what happens and, and my friend in his book actually suggests my friend, Randy, in his book suggested that you ask people that you know and trust. Right. So so like people here that, you know, can hold the truth of who you are and not like the people that see you in a certain role and can't take you out of that box. Right. And you say to them, could you do me a favor? Could you please give me three to five adjectives about me that you think of when you think of me? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you ask five people, 10 people, what will start to happen is you'll get the answers back and you'll start to see overlaps. Right. And that will show you what your gifts really are, what is so innate to you that you can't even necessarily see it. And this is a brilliant exercise. As long as you ask the right people, it's brilliant because it's like, oh, well, I just thought everybody was that. But everybody is not that because mm -hmm. people are seeing it in you. And, and so, you know, you're taking it for granted because it just is you. So that feels really important, really important um, for us. That's a good way of, of using our community to mirror what we need. Absolutely. So hopefully that helped uh, Kat. I think so. <laughs> she says, staying home with my family, which is what I'm doing now. Good, right? So you're already doing it. That's awesome. So why are you judging it? Like, why do you think that there has to be something more, right? So do what feels good and do more of it. Mm -hmm. we've all heard that right do what feels good and do more of it so you know <laughs> I can't really do more of what I'm doing but maybe maybe there's a way but you know <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I, I work five days a week I, I've taken the weekends off it's like I try not to work on the weekend and do any live calls but five days a week I'm doing some sort of live call whether it's paid or 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 free unpaid I'm doing something right and so yep. um you know, I think I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing my I thing. Think you, I think you're on purpose. <laughs> I think I'm, per, I think I'm on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So I don't think we can take any more serious questions. I'll be honest, because we're running out of time. Um, I know there are some more serious questions in the chat, but you know, if you are putting your hand on your chest and you're, if you're feeling pain or grief, let it go. Don't stop it. Let it flow. Let, let it go and release it and ask the angels and your guides and, and the divine to support you in releasing it. Right. Mm -hmm. We've all had pain and grief in our lives. And I think at that time when I, you know, didn't want to feel anything, there was just, you know, I felt like there was a lot and I didn't want to face it. I didn't want to, you know, be burdened by it or be like taken over by it you know that I think that was my big thing at the time it's like there's just too much I don't think I can handle it it's gonna I'm gonna like explode you know and I actually had that happen where I was going through a thing and I literally thought my whole body and being was going to explode from the pain I did mm -hmm. but I was in a I was in a healing uh situation at the time so it was, it was I was safe but I really thought I was going to be annihilated in that moment because of mm. all the pain that was coming up, but I'm still here. So I didn't, right? So it's, it, is allow, it is about allowing that grief to come up, allowing yourself to see it, process through it in a healthy way, you know, safe way, but keep putting your hand on your chest and, to, and on your heart and just saying, I love you. It's mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm sure there's more that you can ask the, uh, the angels for support with as well, but, um, 
Teresa, did you want to add something to that? Is it okay if I do? I'll, I'll be quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so the the one thing I see here also, L, because uh, you brought this up, is is your opening and becoming more than you were. Like that's one of the things. And so, what's happening with your heart too is you're not sure what that looks like or what that feels like, and your your ego self is trying to protect yourself. So. Um, so Alara was spot on with what she was saying, but I want you to understand this other side of it as well. You're becoming more than you were. And, and so just really go in and what I see, I don't know if this resonates for you, but what I see is with your hands on your heart, chanting Om, mm -hmm. Om, and that vibration will travel and start to break up any energy that can just be released and then just breathe it out with the breath. Um, and that's really important for all of us. We're all becoming more than we were and, and we don't know what that looks like. So to really bravely go into any fear we feel about that and just to face it and, and be present with it, like Alara was saying. Yeah. <clears throat> um, good, 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 good. And Lori's just asking, do you have to ask specific angels for specific help? So angels are like people, you can, they all have a specialty, right? So you can call all of your friends over when you need to move a couch, right? And have them all work together. And that's what can be done. You can just say, or you can say to the divine, send me the right angels for the job. But there are angels that have specialties. Um, and so Alara, what I might actually do, if it's okay with you, is, mm -hmm. is send you um, my Archangel cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then you yeah. can send it out to everybody if that resonates for you. And, and so you'll have, you'll have a cheat sheet of who to call on for what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, some things, you know, I, I, I work a lot with Archangel Michael. So I call on Archangel Michael a lot when it comes to like protection or um, cutting cords or cutting, you know, clearing beliefs and things like that. I call on Archangel Raphael a lot for healing, right? I call on Archangel Ariel a lot for many different things, but a, a lot of it has to do with my my personal power, you know, and strength. You know, I call on Archangel Metatron a lot, mostly for ascension stuff and for when I'm working with my my groups and 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 healing stuff. So there, there's a lot of different ones that I call on, but if I'm stuck, the help. Yeah, help <laughs> uh, you know that's it help please help you know so um just ask then that's the thing just ask don't don't stop asking don't wait for something specific before you ask for help and the, you know when you're stuck ask for help and, and next time when you're like you know not in a stuck moment you can research and say okay who are some of the angels i can i can call on exactly or you can just say, I need the right angel for the job right now, please come. And then when they, when you feel the energy, you can just say, who are you? Yeah. And, and learn that way too. <laughs> yeah. I love that. But yes, <laughs> please always ask, always ask for support. You are so supported. And, um, you know, we, we receive the support when we ask, if we don't ask, we don't receive. Okay. So ask for support, be willing to receive it. However, it shows up, don't be tied into how it should show up just be willing and to, to receive and be open to it. Okay. To however it does show up. Cause it does, it always, always, always shows up. Not always the way you think it's going to, but it does show up. Okay. As long Every as you're not, time. yeah. As long as you're not closing off your mind that it can only be this way on this day at this time, you know, like <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I remember one time I was like doing a little test and saying, okay, all right, I'm talking to the angels. I'm, I, I, I just want to make sure they heard me. So I, you know, <laughs> I said, okay, if you've heard me, I want to see a butterfly. And it was middle of winter. So there's no butterflies in the winter. Right. And it's like, I want to see a butterfly. And lo and behold, you know, within three days, I saw a truck with a big butterfly on it. <laughs> go by. It's like, okay. Got it. Right. But it doesn't have, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen right in that instant when you asked. That's why I said it took, you know, within three days, right? So I was still aware of my ask, you know, and of looking for the signs. Okay. So just, just, just putting that out there. All right. Again, like I said, um, please do take a look and get this special offer from Teresa, the 28 days of love in December, those three meditations, plus the course um, that, that Teresa is offering, which is amazing as well. Uh, what is it? Hold on. I've, 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 it's about, the, uh, about the, the Unseen Realms course. Yeah, the dragons, the fairies, the angels, 
and the unicorns. You want to have more of a connection than just, you know, just the angels. You know, I work with the unicorns. I work with the dragons. Um, and I work with the fairies, right? So it's not just, I just, I don't work just with the angels. I work with many different beings of light to support me, the planet, humanity, and all of you, right? So learn a little bit more about some of these different realms and how they can help you, okay? And how you can connect with them more and how they can help you. So it's a wonderful package, I, you know, please do take a look at it. It's available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Teresa 11. Mm. <laughs> oh, and Teresa, by the way, uh, I don't have it here because I didn't get back to the Vienna, but you know, the diamond painting you showed us last time? Yeah. So I went out and got um, or ordered something on Amazon and I started doing it, you know, and like my husband thought I was like crazy. And my daughter was like, well, what are you doing? I also got bookmarks that I made. They're amazing. They're beautiful. I love it. And I wanted to show you today, but I haven't been back to Vienna because it's still in Vienna. Oh. It's like, oh, I didn't, I haven't finished it, but I wanted to, you know, show it to you. It's like, oh my goodness. It's send, a big, um, send me a picture. It's a big like sunflower, you know? which oh, so I'm working I'm working on one now that my little niece started and just lost patience so my <laughs> sister was like oh, I really want to frame it for her so of course <laughs> to the rescue yeah <laughs> I wanted to, I I was hoping to have it here and if we would have gone to Vienna uh yes yesterday or today I would have brought I was going to bring it back so I could show it to you you know so. oh, I can't wait to see it <laughs> send it yeah I will I will I will definitely send you a picture of it once I get it over here all right. So, um, anything? Any last other words of wisdom? What is diamond painting? Oh my God, we don't, <laughs> we don't have time. But Teresa showed us one last time she was doing it, and it was so beautiful. I was like, Oh my God, that is so lovely. I love it. So then I googled it, and yeah, it's yeah, I Google it. Can, yeah, do you have one there? I I do. It's gonna just involve some maneuvering. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, you know, we're so spontaneous here. We do all sorts of things, talk about all sorts of things. And, you know, we like to show all sorts of things. I don't have anything here to show you other than my beautiful- Creativity is super important. So <laughs> yes. This is, this is the newest one that I was working on for my niece who loves cats almost as much as I do. So, yeah. So I just have this part to finish. <laughs> so cute oh my god i love it so it's cute it's maddening yeah no so it's basically these little tiny things that you stick to on a sticky sheet and yeah. uh yeah. it's like paint by number but with plastic um. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so easy and you know and so i did two bookmarks which are also in vienna at the time right now and they're like oh my god so i have pictures of those which i'll send you Teresa. when cool. I, I sent them to hello. some of my groups yeah hello here's the picture where are you? Oh, where are you? I here's can't... the picture of your. Oh, of, here's the picture of her. Um, Beautiful. Her. Yeah. Beautiful. So that was Paris in the in the spring, right? <laughs> I love it. That's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, because I, I I sent her a picture of it. So yeah, I did two bookmarks like that. Thank you, Renetta. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's so easy to do. And especially right now, since we are, you know, in COVID still, a lot of us, right? Uh, you yeah. know, it's a great pastime. But you can also, at the same time, while you're doing it, you can listen to the recordings. You can listen to, um, you know, meditations. You can listen you, to... You can, you can just go into meditation. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Exactly. So, you know, two birds, kill two birds with one stone or whatever the stupid thing saying is. But yeah, you know, so you, so it's not just about just doing it. You can multitask and get some energy as well while you're doing it. So just say, I, that, that, that's what I did. You know, I was listen to something or watch something on YouTube while I was doing the paintings. Like, oh, great, peaceful. I didn't have to think. <laughs> exactly. I do enough of that. All right, awesome. so yeah. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank everybody. You. This was great, wonderful, wonderful questions. I love them all, thank you. Um, I know we probably didn't get to everybody, but we got to most of the questions. Um, again, you know, take advantage of Teresa's wonderful package, you know, that she's offering right now, especially before December 1st, if you want to get the 28 days of love, you know, so please do do that right away. All right. So thank you, mm -hmm. Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Until next time, thank everyone, you. may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. <laughs> Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>